Biography of Tom Kettle by William Dawson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Elizabeth Parsons. Poems and Parodies by Tom Kettle. Tom Kettle, 1880 to 1916 by William Dawson. Two simple words charge now for some of us with sad and infinite memories. It is not the death of the professor, nor of the soldier, nor of the politician, nor even of the poet or the essayist that causes the heartache that we feel. It is the loss of that rare, charming, wondrous personality summed up in those two simple words, Tom Kettle. A genial cynic, a pleasant pessimist, an earnest trifler, he was made up of contradictions, a fellow of infinite jest and infinite sadness. His prototypes were Hamlet, or the melancholy Jacques. Among the delightful essays he has left us in that charming little book, The Day's Burden, is one entitled A New Way of Misunderstanding Hamlet. He was himself a veritable Hamlet in this twentieth-century Ireland. One may ask, did he quite understand himself? Master of paradox, enunciator of enigma, he was a paradox and an enigma, in and to himself. Shall we seek now to pluck out the heart of his mystery? The lines are hackneyed beyond hope, but in this instance they apply in truth. The personality of Kettle had in it something subtle, something essential yet elusive, something not to be defined. He was a great talker in the Johnsonian sense. As a storyteller, it was not so much the point of his tale that counted as his telling of it. The divagations from the text in which he loved to indulge were the delight of his auditors. With truth it may be said that his rich humor, his brilliant mordant wit, caused his listeners to hang upon his words. And his outlook was so wide, his soul so big, his mind so broad, and a deep love of humanity so permeated him that his talk, or one might more fittingly say his discourse, was educating and uplifting. But he was a man of moods, descending from the heights of Homeric humor to the depths of a divine despair. Those privileged to hear him thus expounding will cherish the memory while they live. We too, as it were, have seen Shelley plain. He charmed, he fascinated. This in truth describes him for his spell wrought even on those who actually disliked him. In the numerous notices printed of him since he died, much has been written of the promise of his career. More appropriate it would be to write of his performance. He crowded into thirty-six years of life far more than most men achieve in twice that span. Now the orator is silent. The brilliant wit has ceased to sparkle. The skillful pen will ply no more. Tom Kettle knows at last the answer to the riddle that baffled him, the riddle of the universe. Well may we mourn. For Lycidas is dead, young Lycidas, dead ere his prime and hath not left his peer. William Dawson End of the Biography Chapter 2 Poems and Parodies This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Poems and Parodies by Tom Kettle Personal. Personal. Memorial I would have. A constant presence with those that love me. Dedication sonnet. To my wife. Not the sea only wrecks the hopes of men. Look deeper. There is shipwreck everywhere. So mourned the exquisite Roman's rich despair. Too high in death for that ignoble pen. Nero, his wrecker, is amply wrecked since then, and all that roams a whiff of charnel air. But to subdue Petronius's Maldemare, have we found drugs? I pray you, what and when? Shipwreck, one grieves to say, retains its vogue. 
or let the keel win in stouter fashion and look your golden lie of ternanog is sunset and waste waters chill and ashen faith lasts nay since i knew your yielded eyes i am content with sight of paradise to my daughter betty the gift of god elizabeth dorothy in wiser days my darling rosebud blown to beauty proud as was your mother's prime and that desire delayed incredible time you'll ask why i abandon you my own and the dear heart that was your baby thrown to dice with death and oh they'll give you rhyme and reason some will call the thing sublime and some decry it in a knowing tone so here while the mad guns curse overhead and tired men sigh with mud for couch and floor know that we fools now with the foolish dead died not for flag nor king nor emperor but for a dream born in a herdsman's shed and for the secret scripture of the poor the field before guillemont psalm september four nineteen sixteen on leaving ireland july fourteen nineteen sixteen the pathos of departure is indubitable i never felt my own essay on saying good-bye so profoundly au trifon de cour the sun was a clear globe of blood which we caught hanging over ben edar with a trail of pure blood vibrating to us across the waves it dropped into darkness before we left the deck some lines came to me suggested by a friend who thought the mood cynical as the sun died in blood and the hill and sea grew to an altar red with mystery one came who knew me it may be overmuch seeking the cynical and staining touch but i against the sun's great burial thought only of bayonet flash and bugle call and saw him as god's eye upon the deep closed in the dream in which no women weep and knew that even i shall fall on sleep epigram if grief like fire smoked up against our sight the earth were scarfed in eternal night end of chapter two Chapter Three of Poems and Parodies. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Elizabeth Parsons. Poems and Parodies by Tom Kettle. Early Poems. To Young Ireland. Written in 1899. Dead. Art thou dead or sleepest in this blank twilight time? When hearts are sere and pithless, land of the sword and leer, thy waxen lips are silent, thy brow is bound with rhyme. Hast thou late wed with winter, child of earth's primal fire? The sheathed blade rusts foully through bitter barren years, and harp and pen are bond slaves, thralls to thy children's shame. We garner cockle harvests, vain words and little fleers from waste lands sown with rancor search them with proving flame we drooped stark sons of warfare we blushed and slunk from day while love and truth and honor died in mere fretful fume free brain free brawn is given us then sweep we from our way these shamers of our mother this idle noisome spume for lo an army gathers around a standard clean I gird me dinted armor, and press to touch the throng. Hark, hark, the minstrels wore him in very strength serene. My harp is harsh of utterance, yet take a pupil's song. Then stout heart join our battle, who hail an eastern sun. Our toil shall set this people upon earth's purest height. Then faint heart join our battle, and if our sands be run, at least we queen a swan lay upon the edge of night sewing written in eighteen ninety nine one mocked thy brain is mad with wine the fairies spin the threads of night 
and pour their vials of sour blight about the roots of health yet thine and thou ye garner into verse bright flowers to trick a solemn hearse the cowslip made in love of spring the burning incense of the rose the austere lily her that blows by winter's marge each gracious thing past or unborn weak trusting fool old time shall file thee in his school i know not time his last or first with master hands i despoil all his hoarded sweetness and his gall i crush the eons for my thirst and so am mad pencils of fire lean visions of soul large desire in faith i cast on frozen ground an obscure life of sweat and tears in the far autumn of the years men reap full harvests springing round and judge them gifts of kindly chance my deed laughs through each mellow lance dreams and duty life is an inconstant april laughing into may weeping with the after gust of march storms laid away light o' love her mood is gracious fondling sunbeam stray out across the cloud smoke purple of her cloud robes gray let us dream among the daisies troll a roundelay where the gorse gold is lavished and the lilies pray mary's nuns whose stainless gift is heaven's chaliced ray let us twine a wreath of science let us play our play ere we fight the fight of ages one sweet prelude day the stranger heard and mocked us from the unsurped throne reeled in his scornful laughter eater of hearts blood blown but the lord god heard and heeded therefore we do not moan for he has whispered to us the secret shuttles fly ye know not warp or weaver yet neither swerve or sigh the eater of hearts shall wither the drinker of blood shall die i have set you labor work it i will give you increase for first is winter ploughing after my guerdon peace ye shall pluck strength from sorrow ripe when the sorrows cease ye shall win strength and wisdom to break the stranger's rule but if ye slink and babble ye are but as the fools ye are but as the stranger fit for the thorny schools a song of vengeance for commandant sheepers murdered january eighteenth nineteen o two it is done inexpiably thrust him deep in shameful clay charge his name with every foulness rule the world's ear as you may but the shadow at your banquet that you cannot put away weak you thought him sickness vanquished given to your eager hate so you played him and you slew him with your feline shows of state weak and low the sanctifying touch of death has made him great as a seed that broadening splits the rock on which a palace stands as a trickling breach that godlike parts one land in hostile lands is the memory of sheepers and his slaying at your hands hill and plain and stream shall guard it town and fireside phrase and song young men's unsubdued aspiring old men's striving wise and strong and though hope die hatred may not for remembrance of his wrong murdered leader may god fold you in the mercy of his temple sleep as sleep our unborn children bravest hero in example float the flag or sink forever your red eric shall be ample end of chapter three chapter four of poems and parodies this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Poems and Parodies by Tom Kettle. Translations. At Atchensee, Tyrol. From the German of A. Pickler. Died 1893. The old path up, the woods ranked gloomy legions, the lap and the rustle of the lake behind, and roused by these, from death's more timely regions, the old thoughts fluttering in a lonely mind. 
about my way the pine stems thicker and thicker huddle the mossed stone drips abundantly and through the screen of woven branches flicker the bright and heaving waves of atchency pinewood and primrose scents the air has mixed them poised butterflies a shining sun-bathed fleet skies blue gaunt granite jags and buoyed betwixt them the cloud fleece flushing with the day's defeat the spell is on me nor can aught deliver slowly my spirit fails from life and light and past and future like a pauseless river slide darkly down into a darker night the red glow wanes the black birds trill and quaver dies in the sudden gloom the broad world sleeps and mixed with moonfire flakes the billows waver as though dead hands tossed vainly in their deeps i think of the high dead and that all-daring first bard whom orcus's self might not withstand i think of his vast love and fruitless faring to pluck one rose from proserpine's hand the past is an ill riddle over subtle the thing to be a rumor of a cloud would know the last weft of fate's whirring shuttle you shall know when they wind you in your shroud innsbruck eighteenth july nineteen o four the monks a translation from emile varheron dedicated to father benedict nineteen o five i do invoke you here monks apostolical fountains of dawn torches of faith wrought candlesticks stars shedding day across the ages mystical builders whose walls for scutcheon bear the crucifix hermits who sat on white high mountains for a throne hewn marble quick with will and strength and angry truth preachers with arms uplift and long sleeves loosely blown over bowed heads and hearts gnawn of the sateless tooth windows athrob with dawn rich with all eastern dyes vases of chastity whose fullness might not cease mirrors whose depths enfold as lakes the dreaming skies hills where our dreams have breath fair valleys brimmed with peace seers whose souls for knowing deaths and franchisement walked secretly where walks the mere flesh of no feet titans whose breath was more than squadroned argument kings strange to rome set up in rome's imperial seat swords hung above the pride of kings and emperors lords of a prouder crown and a more grievous loss warriors whose flag was spread in more tremendous wars slayers of heresy with great blows of the cross arches and aqueducts of christian sanctity pillars of silver channels pouring from the east rivers of grace at which the peoples thirstily have drunk and quaffed desire for the unending feast toxins with war and wounds in your most sombre roll clarions whose proud full throats salute the captain christ towers of the sun whose crosses wear an aureole litten of that far sun who was the sacrificed end of chapter four chapter five of poems and parodies this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by eva davis poems and parodies by tom kettle miscellaneous the lady of life i sat with her and spoke right goldenly of love and beauty and because her hair brushed me i plucked down sirius like a pear to braid it and had laughter for my fee yea suing her to heavier slavery had all but plucked the fruitage of her lips when lo inked clouds an absolute eclipse courteous but unmistakable ennui then did i mind me of the sorrow wailed through poet's books and how the streaming torch of suns greater than sirius has failed and as i shambled out the menial's door i heard new feet sound in the statued porch and salutations i had heard before when others see us as we see ourselves 
day with his blotting trumpet overthrew my city of dream and with his marshalled spears my thought that had the unperforming years amended and laid the base of heaven true but pitying signed me priest with chrismal dew and i went telling of expatriate tears of hate cast out with all his sordid peers and tower tops spiring to the gods anew one jibed one wept one with his drowsed air chilled me to very stone but no man hearkened so to my love i went ah once love darkened her eyes and in that darkness i could hide why should they couch them in her alien stare i knew she knew all christs i had denied ennui i saw the low the moon rise the sun go sweatily down there was famine of sleep in his eyes she was a floating frown they nodded heavily over an ancient roof with a pout of the shoulders she he with a grind of the hoof and the moon said to the sun another day to irk us the sun to the tousled moon imagine it a circus ballad autumnal in which any old fool of an idealistic turn explains probably without the palest colour of truth to any other infected with the same disease the failure of their lives labours and dreams and the triumph of the wise of this world hair graying ashen eyes uncomely ridges autumn of things ill done and things undone how all that water slipped beneath the bridges chills the adieu of our defeated sun what paltry unresisted jettison of dear hopes held and there the graveyard west with mud miasma massless hulks and midges we have not lived as wisely as the rest that wasteful trick of yours that gus prodigious of dreams too great for their comparison blue stars ablaze but drowned us in the ditches sad generous valiant tired ephemeron had we but coined the vision when it shone we too had ruled and mocked the dispossessed well we have rags the prudent have the riches we have not lived as wisely as the rest they squeezed us and forgot your je m'en fiches struck in too bloodily to pass for fun our bread was nibbled by the water witches all that we have is given and is gone some penny wheedled for a current bun some shirtless soapless starveling uncaressed still thanks us for but not our fed ambitious we have not lived as wisely as the rest envoy prince lift your heart up out of acheron death bows us gravely to that cleaner test yea when all books are closed all races run we may have lived as wisely as the rest. The Lost Ball A Golfing Rhapsody Suggested by the Lost Chord Playing one day at the seaside, I was topping my balls on the tees, and the sand and the bent were littered with fragments of double D's. Piffle supreme I was playing, and varying slice with pull, but I hit one ball a wallop like a kick of a Spanish bull. It whistled its way towards heaven in a rocket's magic flight. It cancelled the crimson sunset like the shroud of a moonless night. It knocked the paint off a rainbow and scattered the stars like bees and sped through the stellar spaces as though it would never cease. It looped the loop like pagu and parabolic curves. It was salve to my wounded feelings and balm to my ruffled nerves it clove my opponent's gizzard like the stab of a lascar's knife and produced the hardest swearing i have ever heard in my life i have sought in the bent and the bushes that one magnificent ball it may be antarctic crystals were broken by its fall it may be that death as caddy may light on the spot it fell i may have holed out in heaven or find myself trapped in hell 
End of chapter 5「six of Poems and Parodies. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Poems and Parodies by Tom Kettle. Political. Parnell. For the Unveiling, 1st October, 1911. Tears will betray all pride, but when ye mourn him, be it in soldier wise as for a captain who hath gently borne him and in the midnight dies fewness of words is best he was too great for hours or any phrase love could not guess nor the slipped hound of hate track that soul's secret ways signed with a sign unbroken unrevealed his calvary he trod so let him keep where all world wounds are healed the silences of god yet he is ireland's too a flaming coal lit at the stars and sent to burn the sin of patience from her soul the scandal of content a name to be a trumpet of attack and in the evil stress for england's iron no to fling her back a grim granatic yes he taught us more this best as it was last when comrades go apart they shall go greatly cancelling the past slaying the kindlier heart Friendship and love, all clean things and unclean, shall be as drifted leaves, spurned by our Ireland's feet, that queenliest queen who gives not but receives. So freedom comes, and comes no other wise. He gave the chief, gave well, limbed in his blood across your clearing skies. Look up and read Parnell. The House of Lords, an Epitaph so you proscribe and you forbid peace and the trooping ghosts of hate in franchise of the coffin lid your lordship's lordship speaks too late that word had held when yours for you thieving and reaving smote us first if souls were crooked swords were true they took and kept because they durst still though the pride of naked swords passed to a meaner stouter hand you said and it was done my lords yours was the law and yours the land you clove the priest you robbed the shrine with spoil of paul and peter fat brimmed altar cups with altar wine to toast your new magnificat the poor who are the lords of death to you were mud in foundered ways your son was red elizabeth your noon the dutchman's penal days hunger and halters gray despair mara of exile coastless seas bail for master minister you gave my lords and took your ease and then in paris patience broke who is this thing that should oppress men asked and shall we bear his yoke this idle whiff of nothingness that was your lordship's epitaph still might you sell a nation's soul spit on its tomb and yawn and laugh but thief to thief the judgment stole this ireland whom my lords despised languid behind inverted thumbs she who believed and agonized leads on the loud victorious drums wave huddled wave and now the last havocs your castle built of sand we take the future you the past ours is the state the flag the land reason in rhyme will watson of the still unanchored art what random gust what overwhelming sea has riven you apart from us and from the flagship of the free you whose rich phrase and vibrant want to be trumpet and drum of onset and attack who when of abdul's ways you stoop to sing would give us just the dire full-throated thing now when that much damned man has got the sack you change your tune and make to pipe us back from honor and the task of liberty why argue though the plain position is you are mistaken in your premises you blind your sight with hot emotional mists your way of thought is greatly too morose and moist and lachrymose for us a muddled state's last realists we irish to be brief are no wise grievers for the sake of grief i pray you dry those sympathetic tears they rust the will 
and will your nation's sin is no dead shame meet to be covered in but a live fact that sears cancel the past soothly when it befalls that ye amend the present and are just go knock your head on doubling castle walls are they irrelevant historic dust or a hard present tense search through the large print of the statute book for your much valued lord's benevolence and swept in vision westward snatch a look at that dim land where hunger claims to be the honored guest in every family and the slain son writes in a scribble of shame the word of utter hell clan ricarde's name go south and north weep if you will along the dismal quays watch the unreturning ships go forth to fling our seed of strength and hope and worth in far untributary ways and then the soul is something at least in verse ours poet is to be a thing of straw a stained numb thing that sits without the law of yours great master of the universe most nobly planned but watson there's a text done in stout english in king james's reign which says that souls are not to be annexed not for the whole world's gain cancel the past why yes we too have thought of conflict crowned and drowned in olives of peace but when cuchillin and ferda fought there lacked no pride of warrior courtesies and so must this fight end bond from the toil of hate we may not cease free we are free to be your friend and when you make your banquet and we come soldier with equal soldier must we sit closing a battle not forgetting it with not a name to hide this mate and mother of valiant rebels dead must come with all her history on her head we keep the past for pride no deepest peace shall strike our poets dumb no rawest squad of all death's volunteers no rudest man who died to tear your flag down in the bitter years but shall have praise and three times thrice again when at that table men shall drink with men asquith in dublin august nineteen twelve you stepped your steps and the music marched and the torches tossed as you filled your streets with your comic pentecost and the little english went by and the lights grew dim we dumb in the shouting crowd we thought of him of him too great for our souls and ways too great for laughter or love praise or dispraise of him and the wintry swords and the closing gloom of him going forth alone to his lonely doom no shouts my dublin then not a light nor a cry you kept them all till now when the little english go by ulster a reply to rudyard kipling the red redeeming dawn kindled in easter skies falls like god's judgment on lawyers and lords and lies what care these evil things though menaced and perplexed while kipling's banjo strings blaspheme a sacred text never did freemen stand never were captains met from Darjai to the rand from parnell to de wet never on native sod weak justice fared the worst but kipling's cockney god most impotently cursed so now when lenten years burgeon at last to bless this land of faith and tears with fruitful nobleness the poet for a coin hands to the gabbling rout a bucketful of boyne to put the sunrise out ulster is ours not yours is ours to have and hold our hills and lakes and moors have shaped her in our mould Derry to limerick walls fused us in battle flame limerick to Derry calls one strong shared irish name we keep the elder faith not slain by cromwell's sword nor bribed to subtler death by william's broken word free from those chains and free from hate for hate endured we share the liberty our lavish blood assured one place one dream one doom one task and toil assigned union of plough and loom have bound us and shall bind the wounds of labor healed life rescued and made fair there lies the battlefield of ulster's holy war to ireland men so worthy suffered for thee 
men so poor can die then come gather all or rather those who ask not why end of chapter six chapter number seven of poems and parodies this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jason in Panama Poems and Parodies by Tom Kettle Chapter 7. War Poems Paddy, after Mr. Kipling I went into the talkin' shop to see about the bill. The premier e ups and says, we're waitin', waitin' still. The Tories grinned and Balfour strung our gamble ham and high. I outs into the streets again, and to meself says I, Oh, it's Paddy this and Paddy that and a cattle-driven crew, but twas Murphy o' the Munsters when the trump of battle blew, when the wind of battle blew, my boys, when the blast of battle blew, it was Burke and Shea and Kelly when we marched to Waterloo. I looked into a newspaper to see about the land that bred the man who broke the sin that bonaparte planned they'd room for cricket scores and tips and trash of every kind but when i asked of ireland's cause it seemed to be behind for it's paddy this and paddy that and don't annoy us please but it's irish rifles forward fast when the bullets talk like bees when the bullets yawn like bees my boys when the bullets yawn like bees it's connaught blood is good enough when they're chanting R.I.P.'s. Yes, sneering round at Irishmen, an Irish speech and ways is cheaper much than snatching guns from battle's red amaze. And when the damned death's head dragoons roll up the ruddy tide, the times won't spare a smith to tell how Dan O'Connell died. For it's Paddy this and Paddy that, and the fifth'll prate and prance but it's corks and innis killings front when hell is loose in france when clare and carrie take the call that crowns the shrapnel dance oh it's find the dublin fusiliers when hell is loose in france we ain't no saints or scholars much but fightin men and clean we've paid the price and three times thrice for wearin o the green we held our hand out frank and fair and half forgot parnell for Ireland's hope and England's too, and it's yours to save or sell. For it's Paddy this and Paddy that, who'll stop the ool and blade? But Tommy Fitz from Malahide and Monaghan's McGlade. When the ranks are set for judgment, lads, and the roses droop and fade, it's Ireland in the firing line when the price of God is paid. Sergeant Mike O'Leary it was Sergeant Mike O'Leary who broke the barricade, who took the chance and won the cross that crowns the bayonet trade. Twas Madame Dudia, and how's your heart, and how could we forget? But Michael from Inchigila will fill a ballad yet. Oh, a fair and pleasant land is Cork for wit and courtesy. Ballyvourney East and Bale Dub and Kilworth to the sea. And when they light the turf tonight, spit, stamp, swear as of yore, it's the Sergeant Mike O'Leary's ghosts that ward the southern shore. A Nation's Freedom Word of the Tsar, and the drow's malign is broken. The stone is rolled from the tomb and Poland free. This is the strong evangel. The guns have spoken, and the scribble of flame of the guns is liberty. Have you not met her, my lords, a walk in the garden, ranging the dawn, even she, the three times dead? Nay, but in bondage sundered from light and pardon, but now the water is wine and the marriage red. Word of the Tsar, my lords, I think of another crowned with dolor, forbidden, the sun abased, bloodied, unbroken, unbiding, ah, queen, my mother, I have prayed the feet of the judgment of God to haste. Count me the price in blood that we have not squandered. Spend thrifts of blood from our cradle, wastefully true, 
Name me the sinister fields where the wild geese wandered, Lille and Cremona and Landen and Waterloo. When the white steel foam swept on the tidal onset, When the last wave lapsed and the sea turned back to its sleep, We were there in the waste and the wreckage, queen of the sunset, Paying the price of the dreams that cannot sleep. The altar is set, we uplift again the chalice, the priest is in purple, the bell blooms to the sacrifice, the trumpets summon to death and Ireland rallies, tool or free, we have paid and overpaid the price. Word of the Tsar, and Russia rises to vision, Poland and Ireland, thus, my lords, was an augured fate. The days draw in, and the ways narrow down to decision. Will they chafer and cheapen and ruin, or yield to be great? Written in Belgium, August 1914 A Song of the Irish Armies A wind blew out of the Prussian plain, It scourged liege and it broke Louvain, And Belgium shook with the tramp of Cain That a Kaiser might be mad. Iron is God, and they served him well, Honor a mark for shot and shell. So they loosed the devils out of hell from Beer to Allahabad. The old soldiers sing. But we took them from Mons to the bank of the Marne, And helped them back on their red return. We can swim the Rhine if the bridges burn, And Mike O'Leary's the lad. Not for this did our fathers fall, That truth and pity and love and all should break in dust at a trumpet call. Yea, all things clean and old, not to this had we sacrificed, to sit at the last where the slayers diced, with blood-hot hands for the robes of Christ, and snatch at the devil's gold. The new soldiers sing. To Odin's challenge we cried, Amen. We stayed the plough and laid by the pen and we shouldered our guns like gentlemen that the wiser weak should hold. Blood on the land and blood on the sea, so it stands as ordained to be, stamp and signet and guarantee of the better ways we knew. Time for the plough when the sword is won, the loom will wait on the crashing gun, and the hands of peace drop benison when the task of death is through. Old and new soldiers sing. Then lift the flag of the last crusade, And fill the ranks of the last brigade. March on to the fields where the world's remade, And the ancient dreams come true. End of chapter 7 End of poems and parodies by Tom Kettle